So every once in a while, I'll get a client who will say, or a potential client on a Zoom call who'll say, uh, well, Rafi, I get the idea of diversifying all of the trading instruments so that I don't have to trade just ES or NQ. I know there are other instruments that I can trade based on historical price action as well as the current price action of that particular strategy. In my case, it's Price Action Harvester uh, Automated, which is now in version four. Um, but you know, how can I figure out exactly what I should be trading? So there are essentially uh, very quick ways that NinjaTrader 8, which by the way is awesome, particularly when you compare it to the previous version 7, which was good, uh, but as an algo developer for both 7 and 8, I can tell you that 8 is like amazing compared to 7. But as far as, um, you know, when I get that question, like how do I decide as to what I should be trading? Okay, so um, what's, what's my criteria? Well, the first thing you want to look at is not your profit, and certainly not any metrics like sharp ratio or sortino or definitely not uh, you know a percent of your wins nothing like that but you have to look at the max dd that's the max drawdown so that's the first thing you look at then you look at your net profit um, and the way to do that in ninja trader 8 really quickly so that let's say you're analyzing wednesday trades okay today is wednesday so let's say you were analyzing your Wednesday trades and you're trying to pick as to which instrument or instruments that you should be trading, whether uh, you've decided to go on a directional path, you, you think it should be long or short, or if you're going to basically do some hedging, like for example, you might go long uh, SPOOs or the E-mini S&P 500 futures and you might go short bond futures, it all depends, or GC, replace it with whatever you find from your back tests based on uh, the strategy analyzer back tests that you run. So the easy way to do that in NinjaTraders, I'm going to show you guys really quickly here. I have it loaded already. So this is Strategy Analyzer in NinjaTrader 8. And if you don't have NinjaTrader 8, you've never used NinjaTrader 8, I really recommend that you download it. The, the free download is available from my website. You can get to their uh, website and download it for free. Uh, try it out. Um, and uh, if you like it, you know, pay for it. And then you can get the license to actually trade live cash. NinjaTrader even allows you to trade uh, via sim, uh, their sim simulated 101 accounts, so not real cash trades for free. So you would need to have data, of course. Uh, so if you have your uh, broker connected to it, or if you want to buy their data, they have uh, that available. They have their own brokerage, the NinjaTrader brokerage. You can use that data. Lots of different ways to get the data. Uh, but you can use it essentially for free and get the hang of it. But in any case, so what you have to do is basically in Strategy Analyzer, there's gonna be a tab that you can open that looks like that plus sign. You just click on that. You can just open up these tabs. In my case, I've opened up 25 because I have 20 templates for 25 instruments that come with Price Action Harvester Automated uh, version four, which is the strategy right here, and they come for free. Uh, I'm not gonna do any uh, explanation of what these different parameters are in this video. If you guys want, a detailed live zoom demo of how all of this stuff works in detail the demonstrations can last as little as half an hour to as much as an hour depending on how many questions i'm asked but i go through it like fine comb i explain everything in great detail so that uh an investor has an idea of if this is something that is investable or not and they can make that determination for themselves uh, but basically, you just uh, load the template from uh, your templates. Again, these templates would be for free, depending on the package uh, that you get. You get all of them. If you get Mach 9, you get uh, 25 of them. If you get um, Mach uh, 8, 25 would essentially equate to five instrument templates. 125 templates would equate to uh, 25 instruments. And I have, as you can see, uh, oil, which is CL, ES, all the way down to wheat futures. Okay, so there's energy in here, there's natural gas, there's oil, there are indexes, ES, NQ, there are micros in here. Uh, of course, we have, uh, you know, metals, we have gold, energy, natural, you know, there's lots of different uh, instruments that I have available. But in any case, so I've loaded Wednesday, and you can see that I, you can basically load it and then run it. Load it, load the template, run the strategy analyzer. Load the template, run the strategy analyzer. It's really simple. Okay, it's not complicated to do, and then you can do it all the way down to 25. This whole process should take you, uh, I don't know, like 15 minutes, 20 minutes uh, for you to run all of these, and then you can basically analyze it. That's the whole point of the back test. Of course, you want to run it for a considerable amount of time. I recommend about three years, right? I've seen people on various places like YouTube and other videos that I've seen, and they essentially run the back test for like 30 days. 
sometimes like five days. Uh, you know, I've seen 90 days once in a while, but all of that stuff, guys, is not enough. Okay, you need to have hundreds of trades at the very least, and you want to go back several years. Okay, three years is good. Um, in any case, so uh, basically, you would uh, load it and you would be able to simply run it. So, what are we looking for? Let's see. Let me just quickly go over the metrics. So, you can see here max drawdown. Okay, when you run it, I'm not going to run it in this video. You guys can run it on, on, on your own time uh, and basically figure out what you want to do with each, each day. Do you want to trade SPOOS on Monday? Do you want to trade NQ on Monday? Do you want to trade NG, natural gas on Monday? Do you want to trade CL on Friday? Do you want to trade bond futures on Wednesday? Do you want to trade, uh, I don't know, uh, wheat futures on Thursday? It all depends, right? It all depends. You have to look at the, the, res the back-tested results. You have to, in my strategy, I consider current uh, price action, which the setup is looking for a particular set of things and not just your typical uh, you know, indicators. I use those as after the fact filters. Um, and then basically um, uh, my you know, strategy is also uh, contingent on historical price action, which is, I've said this in many other videos, uh, it is like half of your battle, okay, approximately. Okay, so it's like, think of it, think of trading as a big puzzle. Okay, my kids and I, my daughter, my six-year-old, we were doing a puzzle together. It's, a, it's, it's the, uh, the solar system. Okay, so you have to put all the pieces together. Small pieces, you have to put them all together. Just imagine that big rectangular, um, you know, uh, puzzle set, and about half of the pieces are missing. Okay, imagine the, the feeling that you get when you put all of the pieces together and there's one piece missing. You're like, oh, where is it? Where is it? Okay. And imagine half of it is missing. That's essentially what's missing when you don't have historical price action, which a lot of people trade without historical price action. When I say people, I mean people because it's generally retail. Because the on the commercial side, which is the side that I come from, uh, the commercial side, almost everybody that's trading, heavy trading, uh, they are using historical price action. Okay, The industry, even in 2019 figures, had spent $32 billion on data with a B, $32 billion on data and they're using this data to essentially come up with what they're going to do, their strategy, their plan, okay? So what happened in history has a likelihood of repeating itself, not always, obviously, okay? But if, for example, if something happened 70 times out of the past 100 of, of a total of 100, so your data set is 100 occurrences, 70 times it went a particular direction, do you bet on that or not? So that's just one piece of the puzzle. The other half, that's, I should say, first half of the puzzle, the second half of the puzzle, is current price action. What's price telling you right now? What's the setup right now? And so uh, that's a much, much clearer picture as to if somebody should be taking, taking a bet or not on a particular trade, which unfortunately a lot of the strategies that I've seen um, and a lot of these indicators that I've seen that are for sale and most are free, but even the ones that are for sale are essentially just that. They're indicators that are re relying can only exclusively on current price action. And that is half the half the puzzle. So you're missing about half of all your all your pieces. Okay. Uh, so in my opinion, that's not investable. But in any case, so this is how you can easily figure out. You look at the max drawdown, then you look at the total net profit. Then you look at the next one, max drawdown, total net profit. The next one, max drawdown. You can make little notes and go, okay. So on Wednesdays, it looks like from the 25 of these instruments that I ran. Um, back test for and there are 25 instruments here that I've covered but of course there is a lot bigger uh, uh, marketplace than just 25 instruments I've just covered futures instruments you can trade with my system stocks you can trade currency pairs you can trade crypto you name it I've covered futures I am a commodity trading advisor so I feel very comfortable doing that um, so but it doesn't mean you can you have to trade futures you could trade anything you would like okay so you have to run back tests for it I would recommend you run back tests for it for a number of years, see how the system performs, run the back test for Monday, run it for Tuesday, run it for Wednesday, run it for the particular times. I even have in version four special operations, which if anybody wants to know what that is, I'd be happy to explain that. There are money management features that you can figure out how you're gonna manage your uh, trade. There are move stop, which is very unique among strategies. This is not a trailing stop, I can explain that if anybody wants it, and then your obvious price target and your risk per trade, which is your stop. And then I have other features in here too in version four, which checks the stop um, uh, risk that you're taking essentially against the market conditions to see if uh, you have 
enough of a stop in place. Thus, it's called risk, in, risk integrity long, risk integrity short uh, on the parameters there. So this is the idea of how you can quickly figure out in, in NinjaTrader 8 using backtest as to which days you should be trading what instruments, okay, or instrument by itself. So this is just a quick video to help you guys figure out how to use NinjaTrader, a very powerful trading system, which is why I code around. My strategies are all uh, in for NinjaTrader 8. Uh, again, I used to develop for NinjaTrader 7 as well. And once NinjaTrader 8 came along, I was like, wow, okay, it's a tremendous difference, um, especially if you're going to be trading um, multiple instruments concurrently. Almost you have to have, in my opinion, at that point, uh, NinjaTrader 8. Um, so if you still haven't gone to NinjaTrader 8, you do have 7, consider uh, going to NinjaTrader 8. That's what I would say. Strongly consider it. Uh, in any case, if you guys have any questions, please put it in the comments. I'd be happy to read those and reply. Um, and I'm going to be making I'm going to be making other videos as well, covering indicators because this is a topic that keeps coming up, and I think people should really understand how indicators really work. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically explain what the indicator is. Like for example, let's just say something that a lot of retail uses, MACD, right? I'm going to explain what that is. And I'm going to put it in code. And I'm going to run the uh, the strategy based on what the I guess the common way of using that indicator is. Okay, so I did the air quotes there. Uh, so the reason for that is a lot of people think, well, if you just use MACD correctly, if you use MACD on higher time frames, if you use you know look for that breakout, if you look at the histogram, all these other things that they say, all of it again is just going off of current price action. So we're going to put it to the test. I'm going to do actual videos on not just MACD, but a bunch of other indicators so that people can see for themselves as we run the strategy, uh, the, uh, the indicator strategy. So if we're going to go long, if MACD does this, we're going to go short if MACD does that. Um, and we're going to run it and we're going to see in back tests how it works. And I'm going to run it a couple of different ways, not just the typical way, but I'm going to run it in fact, I might do more. I might actually break it down to additional parameters. Let's see what comes up with that. But I'm the point of those videos is going to demonstrate clearly that the indicators by themselves, even if you get a few indicators together, uh, and you look, you know, you look for a confluence of signals, it's still not going to work. Okay, long term. Of course, you might get lucky for a couple of months. You might take seven trades over a 60-day period, and six of them were winners. And therefore, some people might incorrectly conclude that I've got a, a winner. I've got the, the holy grail of trading here on my uh, at my fingertips. It's just, it ain't so. It just ain't so, okay? Uh, because you have to look at it for a longer period of time, all right? And more trades than just six or 10 or 20 or 100 or 200. Um, so um, that's it for, for this video. If you guys have any questions, again, please put it in the comments. Uh, if you want to check out PinnacleQuants.com, which is my firm's uh, price action harvester automated version 4, how it works, um, then on my website, fill out the form uh, so that I can do a demo for you. Uh, those forms are on a first, um, I should say those demos are on a first book, first serve basis. Um, so I do get uh, requests that I unfortunately can't accommodate the time. Uh, that they've said so i just have to go by whatever uh time that i have available to do those demos again they take you know as little as half an hour to as much as an hour it's actually in one or two cases gone to like hour and a half depending on who's asking what questions okay so um those that are running uh, a lot of money i would imagine they have a lot of questions that they're going to ask and i want to answer every single one of them okay so uh that's it for this video until next time god bless